Hello, hello, Jesse Nerina Kaufman here. Hello. Good day. Welcome to Radical Connections. So today we wanted to cover some things that have been actually asked a lot from us and also things that we did ourselves to get married. And one of those things is that why did you invest into a coaching and mentorship program to get there? Why did you invest? Well, the first, first thought that comes to mind was on my part, there were actually uh, so-called dating platforms that were paid mm -hmm. that I did one month trials, you know, to see how it is. Mm -hmm. Why did I do that? Well, I recognized that wherever something was free, there was a high percentage of people that... Not as quality. They weren't serious. They weren't serious. They yeah. weren't hungry to learn and grow. They mm -hmm. weren't at a uh, they weren't they weren't willing to be at a level or a uh, or at a capacity that I desired to yoke up with uh, in marriage. In marriage. Mm. Um, it was a lot of poverty mindset, mm. a lot of just worldly mindset. And I recognized that there's a large percentage of singles out there that they're single for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it's best that they stay single mm -hmm. until they overcome the thing that's keeping them single. Because if they mm -hmm. got married in that state, it would be a disaster. Yeah. And so I wanted to invest at a level that... I can meet and connect with other people that are at that same level. Mm -hmm. Now we're on the same page. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I was thinking a while back when I was in the season of, you know, asking questions is that why am I not married yet? And I also invested into some dating sites, but the thing is that what they were providing is really just, um, people to connect with. There's no education on how to. And when I heard of Fast Track to Marriage course, why it was appealing to me and why I was willing to invest into it. Well, the season was right. And my pain of staying single was much greater than the pain of investing my money into something. And what happened is COVID happened. I was still pretty happy being single and where I was because I was fulfilled in many areas. But COVID helped me to see that I'm isolated even from the things where I was fulfilled in ministry, churches were closed, jobs were, you know, sent, people were sent home. I was working from home or not. I was laid off for a season. And I was scratching my head and saying, God, I don't want to spend any of this lockdown ever alone. I want to be with someone that I can spend my life with and we can connect during that time. And I know a lot of people were complaining about having families and being home all alone, you know, together. I was really wishing I had a family at that time. To be, so, all, to be locked up with. Yeah. So that kicked me into gear of action. And that is something that, you know, I think all of us can look in ourselves and say, if I am where I am because I'm just not looking at things deep enough to know why I'm still here, are we willing to look into a deep, maybe dark things in us to get us uncomfortable you know, sometimes I look at things like, you know, where we're spending money is that shows 
where our priorities are. Yeah, I'd like to talk about that a little bit. Okay. Is all of us, myself included, mm -hmm. if the trust of value or the trust in the value is not yet established or there, all of us will be hesitant to mm. pay for something. We're not quite sure that the value is going to be there. That's true. But if we can be guaranteed mm -hmm. that we're going to get what we pay for, it then comes down to asking the question, what can I do so that I can't afford it? Mm -hmm. That's good. Instead of saying, I can't afford that. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want it badly enough, it'll automatically kick you into solution mode mm -hmm. and, and finding solutions and strategizing. Okay, how can I? Because if, if they, think about it this way with a house or a car. Mm -hmm. You want a car. You, you don't just want it. You need it. If you want to get to a job that's yeah. you know, further than you can pedal your bicycle or walk to. And a house, well, obviously, you need a roof over your head. You know, keep yourself out of the elements. So there are certain things in your life that are a must. Mm -hmm. it, it's not optional. Mm -hmm. It's not up for negotiations unless you're willing to live the life of a homeless person. Mm -hmm. And if that's you, bless you. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> I want a roof over my head and I want transportation. Mm -hmm. And so we figure it out, you know, whether it's to get a loan, mm -hmm. borrow money to get it, or get a job that pays enough so you can afford it. Or get a second job. Or get a second job. Like, listen, you do whatever it takes. Okay, well, that's where we got to in being single. Mm -hmm. I was 40 years old when, or in that season of 39, 30, 40. turning 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was still single and had little to no prospects. And I recognized that I'm halfway through the average human lifespan. I don't have the luxury of time on my side mm -hmm. to lull me into a false sense of security that I still have plenty of time, like you would think if you're in your teens and 20s. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to overlook the issues within mm -hmm. that will keep you single for a long time if yeah. you're still in your teens and your 20s. Because when we're young, we think, oh, we have lots of, lots of options and opportunities and have lots of time. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to overlook the issues within. Yeah that you may not be aware of that will keep you single for a long time yes until you deal with those things those traumas those limiting mindsets and beliefs mm -hmm. and a whole slew of other things that yeah. we won't have time to go into mm -hmm. and so the 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 best advice i could give to the old younger me would be and i'm not even sure if i would have listened to myself back then either mm -hmm. i'm just saying mm -hmm. <laughs> is to just get really honest and humble yeah and not dance around the issues mm -hmm. like really deal with them and yeah. I thought I was back then but at the same time I, I probably you know if I could go back into my you know in, in a time machine and know what I know now I probably ask a lot more questions from others yeah. older wiser heads mm -hmm. um Probably not from the religious setting because, you know, having been Amish, nobody had answers. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the answers I found in my 20s as I had co-workers who were not Amish and they were wise, wise people that I started asking them questions. And they came up with some very rock solid wise answers that helped propel me forward. And so my journey kind of started late because of that. And your dad also had some great input into your dad had great insight. He says I he said I he used to say I have commitment issues and I'm too picky. Mm -hmm. Well, I I I sense deep down that he's possibly probably right, but I didn't know what to do with that. Yeah. So the... how do I overcome commitment issues? Well, I had no grid for understanding how to plow through that and overcome it. So now I do. So, and so I'm trying to help others, you know, move through that. So the next thing is to learn how to ask questions of, from others, you know, because same in my life, people outside of me would say, oh, gosh, you know, there's this thing, there's this thing, there's this thing that we see in you that needs to be um, worked on. So the, and then asking the next questions that, OK, how? where to go? How? Give me some suggestions on how. 
or send me a link to something that people actually help with that because the how is going to also get you motivated to take action because if we know we have problems but we don't know how to overcome them we need to ask questions we we shouldn't stay in this like oh i have problems man was well, too too bad no how can i fix this what is the solution for that and moving forward and asking those questions how can i change this how can i get this how can i achieve this right if someone has answers go to those who have answers and that's what we're learning till even now yeah that brings up another point about well, that you just that you just shared mm. that i'd like to personalize to myself and that is everybody has answers to what they think the problem yeah. is yeah it's easy to point out problems in other people mm -hmm. the people that you want to ask questions from are the ones that can also then give you give you practical steps on how to okay. walk that out mm -hmm. and overcome that problem see it was easy for everyone in my life back then to point out that i have commitment issues i'm too picky or whatever it was yeah i need to get married great well, I already know that. Yeah. So what 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 is my action plan? What's my plan of action to mm -hmm. get married or to overcome commitment issues and interferes and low mm -hmm. confidence? Mm -hmm. I didn't know. And nobody else did in my life at that mm -hmm. time. And once once I you know bumped into Carlos and Chantel Campos, they had that practical step by step by step. And so I was like, okay, well, I can do math. One mm -hmm. plus one plus one equals three, you know, mm -hmm. and a two plus two equals four. And so I just followed the directions and I don't have anything else to lose. Nothing else I've tried worked, you mm -hmm. know, and, and this guy has uh, enough confidence to, sh to, for me to borrow some from him. And so I did. Yeah. And, and evidence they had. Evidence. Yeah. They had evidence to back up what they were saying. So Follow directions, and needless to say, um, mm -hmm. within six months of knowing that Carlos even existed, I was a married man, mm -hmm. and still am happily married uh, to this day. Yeah. So we invested into that, and really grateful that we did. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We probably wouldn't be married. We probably wouldn't even meet each other. And, you know, the other question I hear with that well i'm waiting on god for i was doing that for all my life yeah same so waiting on god didn't get me married either and yeah. so he's waiting on you to take action yeah he was that was a wake-up call for me when god told me he was waiting on me so you gotta give god something to bless and to prosper yeah which is faith in action mm -hmm. you know your actions demonstrate what you believe if you yeah. believe something then you'll take action on that thing that you believe it in he'll redirect you if needed. and if you're off course yeah right he'll god will redirect you and if you're going the wrong direction well if you're taking action in faith he'll turn you around in the other direction if that's what you need to do he'll mm -hmm. guide you and lead you but you gotta be in motion and and what does that look like? Well, practically speaking, first of all, we'd encourage you to either hop in if you're in a serious dating relationship, engaged or married, then go to the Epic Your Life community on our school platform mm -hmm. where Carlos and Chantel are leading that up. Or if you're single and have no prospects and discouraged and wondering like, well, where's my special wife or husband? Mm -hmm. Well, then go to our single to married uh platform on the school community where we're leading up with the singles mm -hmm. and we'll guide you through those things step by step and yeah. identify the things that are holding you back uh, the the triggers the hidden agreements the mm -hmm. bad religious teaching that's out there yeah. that's totally not funded in the bible at all yeah. and uh, chiefly the the one about waiting on god is one that is i often when somebody says that i always dig deeper to see what that means to them because mm -hmm. they may or may not be a biblical perspective and is just a shield mm -hmm. and a deflection or avoidance against taking real meaningful action yes. that will force you to confront your fears yeah. and overcome your fears mm -hmm. and take action 
It's yeah. easy to say waiting on God and then stay in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Everybody can do that. That's good. There's so much we can cover on this. It's really a great conversation to have. It's a great season to have that, you know, as interestingly enough, springtime, deep cleaning is happening during this time, right? A lot of people are cleaning their houses and then also preparing their yards or, you know, land or whatever you have on your hands to plant and to create something. Well, it takes action and we need to do that with ourselves. We'll look, look deeper into ourselves and ask those hard questions and being honest, being honest with yourself. Yeah. Drop the ego, humble yeah. yourself, ask questions Yeah. to the point of being willing and ask questions with the heart of being willing to then follow mm -hmm. directions, follow instructions from people who have walked the path before you mm -hmm. and and yeah, what needs to change in me to get you fill in the blank? You know, we were talking about that this morning. What needs to change in me? And all of us need to ask those questions, us included. We're always in the process of growing. And if we're not, that's where we are withering, you know, and dying. That's not withering. Cool. How does Carlos say it in the in his content you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting yeah that's we don't want to be ripe or ripe and if rotting. you're ripe oh, then mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you're probably not coachable teachable at the very least yeah if you're green and growing you're coachable teachable you're asking questions to learn mm -hmm. and then you're following through on what you're learning yeah otherwise you know knowledge just pops you up if if there's no action taken on it yeah and if you've been watching us for a while and you've been checking us out and it finally maybe clicks with you, go into our singles group. We're going to put the links below for both the singles group and the Epic Your Life group because we have different content there, different uh, tools. And listen, we focus on foundation. We focus on your identity, on rooting or uprooting those um, you know, trauma and beliefs that you've been handling your whole life and it's not beneficial for you it's not serving you well we go through a lot of things actually you know practicing things that how to meet person how to ask questions how to know if it's the right person what to know about yourself and your identity was your mission your vision for life there's a lot of things yeah. that we cover and what about the single mo mother's or single mm. ladies out there that are struggling alone mm. with financial difficulties. Right. The number one thing that I would spit, say to you is if you, if you want to learn and grow and you want to invest in yourself, but you're so strapped and so broke that you can't, mm -hmm. there is a way forward through that. Mm -hmm. Again, you have to bring it back to the house and the car analogy. You have to make it a must mm -hmm. and you do whatever it takes, whether yeah. it's to borrow money from somebody to tide you over, Mm -hmm. whether it's to get a higher paying job or invest into your skills mm -hmm. so that you can uh, so that you have the skill set to get a higher paying job yeah and and then also recognize that if you get married and once you get married guess what you won't have to do it alone right. you'll have a husband to help you cover so it could it could very well be the thing of it's it, you just look at it in the same way you look at the tuition of going to school mm -hmm. to get a degree or an education. Mm -hmm. Nine most people have, you know, they borrow money to do that, yeah. but it's strategic with a purpose and they exp and they look at it as, as an investment because they expect mm -hmm. to, to pay it off yeah. because th what they're investing into is going to enhance their, their capacity. Mm -hmm. And so there's sometimes we have to stick our necks out and this this hits home closely for me because I don't exactly like sticking my neck out and uh, taking leaps of faith financially unless the return is like I'm I, like if I know there's a return, I'll, I'll go there. You know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we have to work on our belief and trust that there's going to be a return. But uh, just recognizing that, you know, you being married, you have somebody to help you. Mm -hmm. So it's worth going through a little bit of pain to snap out of the single rut in order to get married yeah. and then do it together. Yeah. Marriage is beautiful. It's so worth it. 
Oh my goodness. We're so grateful for mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. All right. Hopefully this was helpful, you guys. This is a little bit more of a raw and real talk with you and ourselves too. And um, it's a longer video, but enjoy it. Reach out to us if you have any questions and um, we'll be happy to help you. And if you want more, see the links below. That's right. Be blessed.